Hey, Fight fans, I'm Sarah Davis, and you're watching Fight News Now Extra. We have some new matchmaking to get to next on our newsmakers, and then we'll hear what our MMA panel thinks about the new bouts and more. Here we go. The UFC's flyweight division is still pretty new after inaugural champ Demetrius Johnson made his first title defense. But Dana White says they're not stopping there and said a 115-pound division known as strawweight will eventually happen in the UFC. Strike Force's Josh Thompson is making his debut with the UFC. And talk about a harsh welcome. He'll have his hands full when he faces off against Nate Diaz. The two scrappers will battle at UFC on Fox 7 on April 20th. And UFC 159 is rounding out. It just got a whole lot heavier with Roy Nelson versus Czech Congo and light heavyweights Phil Davis and Vinny Magalhaes who have been trash tweeting back and forth. They'll finally square off. UFC 159 Jones versus Sonnen goes down on April 27th. So those are some of the latest matchups in the UFC. Let's hear from our panel, John Pollock, John Ramdean, and Robin Black. Guys, which fight do you like the most? I think the one that stands out to me, potential fight of the year candidate between Nate Diaz and Josh the Punk Thompson. And it really feels that this April 20th show, going to San Jose, we've got that underlying UFC versus Strike Force theme here. Yeah, also the Caesar Gracie theme. And if you're in California, you need the Caesar Gracie fight team because these guys bring it every single time. And you think about a matchup between Josh Thompson and Nathan Diaz. We are going to see the full gamut of mixed martial arts. These guys know how to fight. They know how to entertain. And when you're on Fox, that is your obligation. Yeah, for Josh Thompson, you got to brush off those wrestling shoes and try to get inside that long reach and stay away from the submissions. Diaz, both Diaz's these days, look very unbeatable, but this is a fantastic fight. And it seems that this will be a, a real interesting Fox card because you're not going to have the, the backdrop of having NFL Sunday every week week to promote these Fox cards and it's been the the non football promoted cards that have done the least amount of viewers and this one they're certainly loading this one up and I think on paper here you can't really ask for better fights here on this card providing they all make it to April. Well you just hope that uh, the past six shows people are starting to realize that if you want entertainment you tune into the UFC on Fox because they give you the biggest stars and they give you the most entertaining fights and I think that's what the UFC is hoping for and again when you have Josh Thompson versus Nathan Diaz and the lightweight uh, championship matchup between the number one and number three or number five guy in the division, I think it mo makes sense and I think a lot of people will tune in because of that factor. And if you throw in Daniel Cormier, Frank Mir on that yeah. card, I mean you have some interesting human interest stories too of introducing Daniel Cormier here on Fox. Uh, I think this card is looking great. We mentioned of just getting to a specific card. That is the problem Bellator is realizing this coming Thursday as they kick off their lightweight tournament. Patricky Pitt Bull Freite off of uh, off of that eight man tournament and this is the first week here on Spike where the first week you had just two title fights and just being on Spike is a big draw last week Mohamed Lawal as well as Ben Askren this week you really didn't have that hook I mean of these eight names in the yeah. lightweight tournament not very recognizable to the average mixed martial arts fan that is just being introduced to Bellator over the past two weeks and I think this Thursday show could kind of take it on the chin well yeah it could it could take it on the chin in terms of numbers and people tuning in because they simply don't know who these guys are but for a lot of these fighters especially for da especially for David Rickles and Lloyd Woodard these guys have an opportunity to make their names go out there you're in the main event put on a show really try to cement yourself as a world-class mixed martial artist by showing again the full spectrum of your skill set and not forgetting about the fans trying to give them the type of entertainment that uh, fans have come to expect from Bellator. Yeah, and before the Viacom deal for Bellator, you were looking at them like, how can they really stand out in the world? And the biggest thing was just be entertaining. Find really hungry young guys. Now with Viacom, you've got money, you've got important ways to make everything work, and you've got that, uh, you know, that ability to bring in guys like Randy Couture to put on that uh, reality show. I mean, Bellator has the opportunity to really make a statement as really the Pepsi to the Coke the UFC. And I think the, the Randy Couture announcement, which will be made uh, formally next week, uh, that one to me really does spark, I think, th this war that we're going to see in 2013. It seems that Bellator was almost coasting here, and Dana White not even really insulting Bjorn Rebney or Spike really at all. He was just, you know, they're running their thing, we're doing ours. I think the Randy Couture announcement is really going to spark that Dana White
point of how we saw him get combative with affliction and with yeah. strike force and with the IFL and uh, even scooping up other organizations. I think we're going to see Dana White kind of put into battle mode at this point and just try to mess with this company. Uh, one of the main reasons why is because they have a different model than the UFC right now. This tournament format, I think, is really allowing them to grow because they get to establish their homegrown stars. They don't have to look outside of, you know, what they're doing right now. They don't have to go out and get the Bobaloos, although they have done that. They don't really need to do that. As long as you can establish your stars by having them perform and perform against good guys. We saw that new new guy, new guy stars are literally created every week. We saw Babalu lose. So that's what they have to happen. They have to go out. They have to find the best fighters that they can that don't necessarily have a big name and let them establish themselves in the Bellator organization. Yes, but that's right back to John's original point, that we're in week three and we're missing heat. We're missing name power. And, you know, it's a long-growing process, but you can really shorten that process very quickly by throwing in a couple of Andy Couture's. I really like what they're doing. Like I said, every Coke needs a Pepsi, and, and there's a position here for that. I yeah. don't know if it's Pepsi, more like Coke Cola. <laughs> yeah, yeah. RC. Yeah, but to that point, I think here it's it's a bigger picture here in terms of trying to create stars. I think simply uh, beating a name guy doesn't create a star. I mean, that to me is what I call the Seth Petrozelli rule, where yeah. he beat Kimbo, and everyone was saying how well now Seth Petrozelli is going to be the and big who guy. Just, it doesn't who work just like beat that. Seth Petrozelli two weeks ago. Do we remember his name? Yeah. But again, you use the tournament format. Look at uh, Michael Chandler. Nobody knew who Michael yeah. Chandler was. He's and now I'm hearing people say that Michael Chandler is the number five lightweight in the world. Do you disagree with that? He's a star. Uh, Michael Chandler, you can certainly make that our top ten. I don't know if I'm yeah. saying top five. I'm just saying all 10, it takes but... is to win this tournament and you inject yourself into the title picture. Sarah Davis, Jacob Noe, brand new star after he beat Seth Petrozelli. Good work. Good work, <laughs> Can't Polly. wait to see that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Add some major MMA action will be live on Fight Network this weekend. We're bringing you one FC7 from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia at 6 a.m. Eastern on Saturday morning. Stay with us here on Fight News Now Extra. We've got a preview of Bellator 87 up next.